Hello and welcome. Wildaf released a software version of the Microwave 1 synthesizer. It's a faithful recreation of the hardware from 1989. It's not only a standalone synthesizer, but you can also remote control the hardware with it. In my opinion, the best way to understand a synthesizer is to design a new sound from scratch and then discover all the different elements of the synthesizer. Before I create the init patch, I want to make sure that my microwave hardware, which sits in the rack behind me, follows everything that I do on the software. So to enable the remote control mode, I click on the menu, go to show hardware control. Here I need to activate the right input and also select the live mode. I set up my DAW to have the software plugin on the left side and the hardware playing on the right side. To create a new sound, I click on the init button and select single sound. Keep in mind that with the init patch, both oscillators make a sound. So first I mute oscillator two. Now we can select a wavetable using either the classic dial or the drop down menu. For my sound, I would like to use the add harmonics wavetable. And you can move the position of the wavetable with the wave knob. I would like to automatically modulate the position of the wavetable. While most relevant information can be found on the main page, I can also go to the oscillator one page to find additional parameters like the pitch modulation and the wave modulation. You can select from a number of sources of modulation. In this case, LFO1 is already selected and increase the modulation depth with the red knob. This is way too fast, so I click on the LFO page and reduce the speed. There is a little blinking light, which was my idea by the way, um, to visualize the speed and also the shape of the LFO. The LFO of the microwave is always polyphonic or global. In polyphonic mode, each note triggers a new waveform, but in global mode, all of the eight voices are being modulated with the same LFO. Let's listen to what we already got on the hardware. And software. Hardware. And software. I would like to bring in oscillator 2. So first I mute oscillator 1, go to oscillator 2 and increase the volume here. Both oscillators use the same wavetable, but of course you can select different positions for each of the two oscillators. I would now like to use the wave envelope, which is an eight stage envelope that you can use to modulate either the position of the wavetable or any other parameters. In the original hardware, it was very complicated to work with that. Um, I studied the manual quite a lot uh, to find all this information, but it was always a pain to dial in the eight stages and volumes and set all the loop points on the tiny display uh, with a little um, knobs there. So I'm very happy to see a nice graphical representation here in the plugin. Let's put the wave amount over here. And you see that there is always a little dot running, so you can check what you're doing. By default, the wave envelope is set to two stages, but you can, of course, increase it up to eight stages. Let's create something maybe like this. Yeah. 
It's also possible to loop certain stages. So we could either loop the whole wave envelope or just a part of it. Since we would like to have a pad sound in the end, I will now change some parameters of the volume envelope. By the way, you can always either just click something here uh, with the mouse or use um, the knobs. Let's bring back oscillator one as well. It would be nice to have some modulation of the stereo field, so I go to the filter page, select LFO2 as source and increase the modulation here. It's slower. Let's check again how that sounds with the hardware. Since I had the remote control going on all the time, I can just click on my other channel and play it. Hardware and software. Microwave came with a 24 dB low pass filter, which we can access on the filter page. This filter is very characteristic, especially if you add resonance to it. And I would like to have a little automatic modulation here as well, so I go to the filter envelope and create um, like a falling envelope which gives me some nice flavor to that pad sound. Let's listen again to the hardware. There are a few more tweaks to the filter which I would like to show you. The original microwave was released in two revisions which had different filter chips and you can select between them by clicking on the revision button and select either A or B. Also, all original microwave units are more than 30 years old by now and maybe the calibration of the filter is a bit off in your unit. So you can go to the calibration setting and um, select different offsets per voice. I found out that one of my eight filter chips has a higher resonance than the other ones and to imitate this behavior I could dial in an offset here on the calibration page. When you're happy with the sound that you designed you can save it to any of your user folders and 
it's a very convenient thing that the name of the sound will also appear on the hardware unit's display. You need to manually save this on the hardware unit because the software does not have a library function. But other than that, all the parameters can be remote controlled from the software. We also have a multi-mode, which can be activated on the multi-page. Let's load the sound that we just created on instrument layer one. And load another sound to layer two. The nice thing about the software is that the sounds are stored within the multi. On the hardware, you always had to make sure that the multi was um, not using a different single patch. So if you changed a single patch, you could break your multi patch. But in this case, if I made changes to one of those two sounds, the multi would still be untouched because the parameters are stored within the multi. Designing your own sounds is a lot of fun, but of course you would also like to have access to all the original sounds, right? So you are lucky because we have all the sound sets which came with the original Vile of Microwave. The software, again the hardware. The microwave is also known for its classic choir sounds. Let's listen to the microwave choir patch first on the software. And on the hardware. Again, the software. If you want to use more sounds that are not included in the factory library, you can import them in the menu either as SUSEX file or MIDI file. It of course also works with sounds that were created on the hardware and then dumped as MIDI file from there. This is it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Please let me know in the comments if you have more questions about the microwave plugin or the hardware. I will probably do another live stream or video about this synthesizer soon.